Filters are used in every ToonTrack product to sort your content, and they're especially handy when you have a ton of content in front of you. That's what we're going to cover today in Easy Mix 3. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for full courses and hundreds of free videos just like this one. I also have a support group on Facebook and Discord. Great communities. The links are down there in the description. Let's get started. We're in a new empty project, and you're always going to see two empty filter chips favorites and user presets by default and we're going to talk about those in another short video if i go to file new and i go to my quick start i'll just select guitar as a quick example now we see a bunch of inactive filter chips because they're dark brown and we see one single orange active filter chip so the only filter chip that's affecting my search results and my preset list is this electric guitar filter chip which came from that splash menu preset when i start a new project now let's navigate over to that filters tab it's right here and as we can see those active orange filter chips they're actually selected down here guitar electric amplifier and insert so Whatever active filter chips are in this filter chip string, you will see highlighted down here in these filter columns. I'll clear all of them out. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six columns. And they're named, and they're kind of the same exact text size and font. So let's acknowledge that these are header text up here at the top. We have preset packs. And when it comes to the core pack of easy mix three that's actually three separate packs it's everything that was included in easy mix one which was from way back everything included from easy mix two and then the new content coming from easy mix three so that's why you see three separate packs here and you might see more here if you've purchased additional add-on packs the list will just keep going so if i want to recall an easy mix 2 preset that i remembered liking i remember it was a rock guitar tone i would select easy mix 2 under instrument group this is groups of instruments i would select guitar now under the regular instrument menu only electric guitar is available to select but depending on your situation you might just want to select electric guitar and this was a rock tone so i'll select rock Take a look at this one two three four five six seven eight there's only eight presets left over from the 900 plus that we have if you only own easy mix 3 so that is the basic workflow of using filters we generically went over the first four columns but real quick a preset pack is what product you're using an instrument group is like a master category for an instrument that can have subcategories the instrument column is for all of the individual instruments. Genre should be self-explanatory. What theme or style generically are you going for? We'll spend a moment on type. An amplifier is what you plug your guitar, your bass, or your keyboard into to completely alter your source sound. An auxiliary, let me cover auxiliary and group bus at the same time. Those are meant to treat multiple signals at once and there's a lot to it so we'll cover that in the future an insert's the most basic way to use a preset an effect or an effect basically let's say you have a single vocal channel in your DAW session and you want to take one preset and only apply it to that single track you insert it onto that track that's why it's called an insert and then we have master which is and these presets are intended to go onto your master fader probably for mastering but not necessarily but to treat your entire DOS session and then under effects i like to look at effects in two ways as dynamic or creative a dynamic effect is more of a utility it has a job to do like compression gating eqing and then there's creative effects to get more creative you know vibes going with reverb phaser chorus stuff like that modulation so this is how you can look at these six main columns but there's a seventh one if we go up to the show columns menu right here the producer column is not visible it's not checked let me click on it and now we have a seventh column that shows the people who created all these presets let me clear my filters so i could say hey i want ronnie's presets and all the one he's created i'll select ronnie and here's all the presets that ronnie made 
And if I go to reset the default, I'll click it right now. Nothing changed. The default is not to have a producer column. And that column should have went away when I select or reset the default, but I have a filter active. So columns will not go away from the show columns menu while you have an active filter. So let me get rid of this active filter. Go to show columns, reset the default. Now we're back to where we started with six columns. And if I don't care what product or preset pack the preset I'm looking for came from, maybe I don't want to see preset pack. So I'll go into show columns and I'll uncheck preset pack. And this looks better. I have more space. And let's say for me, the type of effect is most important. And I want to see that first. I can just click the header text up here, type and drag it over here. So it's pretty customizable to your specific workflow. So this is all great stuff to keep in mind. I started a new empty project. Let's say I want a newer preset from Easy Mix 3. I'm working on drums and I'm doing a pop song. If we take a look, we see these little orange numbers up here. You saw me click on them earlier. This says I have one filter active in the preset pack column. I have one in the instrument group, one in the genre, and that's three filters total on the filters tab. So that's how that works. And that's why those pop up. So let's say I want a second filter in my instrument group. Not only do I want drums, but I want percussion too. So I'll click on percussion and look what happened. I wanted drums and percussion, but when I selected percussion, it switched from drums to percussion and I still only have one active filter. Well, how do I select more than one filter in a column? You hold shift on your keyboard and now you can select multiple filters. Now I'll select drums. Now my goal has been achieved. Now there's two filters. You can see by this number two active in the instrument group, drums and percussion. And now I have more presets than I did only having the drums filter down. So if I select more filters here, 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 and here in the first five columns and in the producer column, if you have it up, you will actually get more results in your preset list. There's one if and or but about that is let me clear everything. So check this out. If I go up to my master filters, I have five filters active on my filters tab. If you mouse over this, there's an X. This will clear the whole page, which is convenient. So I'll clear all filters. Selecting multiple filters in six of the seven columns gets you more results in your preset list, but one of them acts the opposite, which is the effects column. If I select, let's say a chorus, and then hold shift because I'm also looking for an EQ. So I'll hold shift and hit EQ. I actually have less results. You can see my bar going down. I'll select a couple to show you. I want a gate as well. And I want an octaver. Look, there's only one left. When you select multiple filters in the effect column, you actually get less. And that's because most of the effects are not just one off effects. Some of them are. A lot of them are combinations of effects. So when you select multiple filters in the effects column, it's saying, oh, you want a preset that not only has chorus, but also has EQ, also has gate, also has an octaver combined. That's why you see less instead of more. It's saying, it's not saying show me all the chorus effects, show me all the EQ effects, show me all the gate effects, show me all the octaver effects. No, it's saying show me all those combined into one preset. So that's why six of the seven columns, as you shift select them, the search results in the preset lets get, list gets bigger. But when you shift select in the effects column, it gets smaller. I have a new empty project. Let's say it's an orchestral thing. So I'll select brass. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to select cello and bassoon, which will be a first for me and clarinet. So I have four active filters. That number is reminding me that. And I'm going to do group treatment. So let me select a group bus. So here's four filters in the instrument. Here's one filter in the type. And up here, that's five filters total. Let's just talk about a couple controls real quick. First is this. Let's say um, I want to expand from just 
group bus type effects, I can mouse over this one and it turns into an X and I can click on that X and it will just cancel all filters in that column. I'll do it in the instrument column. There were four here. I'll select the X. Now there's nothing. We're actually back where we started. Um, let's just do uh, bassoon, cello, and uh, clarinet. And now we'll do inserts. So three filters plus one equals four. There's four filters on the filters tab currently active. If I mouse over this four, I can hit the X button and reset the entire filters tab and start from scratch, which you saw me do a couple times already. But next to it is this bypass button. If I click this, that bypasses all filters on the filters tab and gives me my 900 plus presets back in that list. Now, I don't know why that's valuable on the filters tab. Maybe you can fill me in because who's going to just go through 900 plus effects? You know, it's going to take all day. So let me power this back on. The reason why this is useful is because of the similarity map, which we're going to get to probably in the next episode. If I click on the similarity map, our filters tab with the number is still accessible. So if you click bypass now while on the similarity map, look, it brings our galaxy of dots, our galaxy of presets back instead of just showing us the few that are in the preset list. So that's why the bypass works, not for the filters tab, but the similarity map tab. And let's also look over here under the chips here, filter chips. We discussed this earlier, but there is a power on and off button. So this is another way to activate and deactivate a filter, except the chip kind of hangs around and reminds you that, hey, you were working on this. So if I wanted uh, Bassoon to go away temporarily, from my preset list, I could power it off here. And as you can see, it deactivates in the filters list, but it's also still up here. Like, hey, you were working on me. Don't forget I'm here in case you want me back. So you can power it on back, or you can completely eliminate the chip by going over the X button. So there's the features right there on how to see how many filters you got running, how to get rid of them quickly, how to bypass all the filters on the filters tab for the similarity map tab view. All important stuff to know for a speedy workflow. Let's talk about filter behaviors a little bit more. If I was going to do a country song, notice that a lot of filters just go dark. They're not really visible anymore. That's because under the specific genre of country, they only have generic or electric guitar presets which are for an amplifier or for your master fader. So it kind of takes a lot of the guesswork out from a, a world view of what you have to work with. We'll just try one more doing this off the top of my head. Um, let's select metal. So for metal presets, you know, we don't have a bassoon, a metal bassoon. That's really unfortunate actually, but we have a lot of drum presets. We have guitar presets. We have bass presets and we have plenty of types of presets for those instruments and plenty of effects. So that's one thing to keep an eye on is when you select a filter, you'll see a lot of filters go away saying, Hey, nothing's available here. So it's another way to examine what might be in the preset list without having to manually go through it. You just look at how the other filters are reacting to your selection and you might be able to work faster just from that observation. Another thing is, do you see this line right here under the master? There's a line right here. And do you see this line right here under single effect? Here's just a small exception of how filters behave. So AI amp capture, that's for treating your DI tone, whether it's guitar bass or maybe something else. That's for giving it like a pre EQ treatment and the AI will check out your tone and give you suggestions on how you should treat your DI before you amplify it. So if I select that noticed AI assisted goes dark. So you can only select AI camp amp capture or AI assisted at once. AI assisted is more so for the master fader though. I do see insert bus group, you know, still highlighted. So there's obviously some, um, types of effects that work with it as well. But AI assisted is when you feed it your master fader mix and it listens to the whole thing, analyzes it and gives you suggestions for settings. So 
these are two, you know, easy mix three, you know, big hitter features right here, but you can only s select one at a time. After you select one or the other, you can then continue to select above this line. And the same thing with over here under effect, we have single effect. I'll click on it. You can see a couple options went away. There's no single effect amplifier or cabinet over loud or sampler. But single effect is going to break down your preset list so it's only giving you one effect. So if you want chorus, I'll select this chorus. This is only chorus. It's not EQ, it's not compression, it's not a combination of effects. It's a single effect because you selected this single effect filter. After you select the single effect filter, then you proceed to select what single effect you're looking for. Lastly, let's talk about exclude and a few other little redundant ways to select. Let's say I'm in the effects column and I like all these effects except for a few. So I would use exclude instead of just selecting and including. So let's say I don't want an octaver. So I'll right click and I'll select exclude. And Easy Mix 3 gives us a red filter chip and it's red trying to get your attention, attention saying this isn't a regular filter chip that gives you results. This is excluding results, right? And you can treat it like any other filter chip. You can power it off or you can get rid of it. But a workflow might be is I just like all this stuff except for Octaver. I'll exclude it. And no sampler. So that's a cool way to use exclude. Another way is, is sometimes presets make it into your preset list that you don't want there, but they're included there because it's, they're generic, you know, they fall in line with other filter presets you chose. So if for some reason that bassoon keeps making it into your preset list, you know, even though you selected something else, then you could annihilate it by selecting exclude. Lastly, these are kind of redundant. I'll clear this all. It's kind of redundant, but the control probably command on Mac key on your keyboard works the same as shift when it comes to doing multiple selections. So I just selected control and clicked command on Mac and I'm doing multiple selections or I can select control or shift to exclude them. If you right click on one of these filters, there's the key command right there, but it's not necessarily control or command. It's also shift. Either one works. But here's another way to select something is you can right click on it and select it instead of just left clicking. It's a little redundant. You can right click on it and deselect it instead of just clicking on it again to deselect it. But the exclude feature is also under that right click menu and under this little tiny menu icon. The filters tab works exactly the same in every tune track product, not only Easy Mix 3. I suggest you take it seriously and learn how to use it well so you're super fast and super accurate when it comes to finding what you need. It's a beautiful thing. Otherwise, you run into speed bumps that kill your vibes and kill your creativity because you're trying to figure out how to find stuff, you know? I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out shootyschool.com for complete courses and hundreds of free videos just like this one. If you want to see me again, hit subscribe. If you want to do me a favor, do comment below, even if it's just saying hi. I'll see you on the next one.